Hi, I'm Darren and this is Monkey Tree Woodwork. Thanks for joining me on this video. Um, it's been a little while, uh, just over a year now that I posted my last video, so I thought uh, it's about time. Um, I've rejigged and reorganised my workshop that was an absolute mess beforehand and when you're working in a very small space you need to have things organised and, and out of the way. I was having to move equipment around, I was tripping over hoses and leads, um, it wasn't particularly the safest of places so I had to have a rethink and a rejig um, and given this current climate it's given me a bit of time. So I've ripped everything out and um, refitted and had another go and put stuff on the wall and it's free space so that I can now have equipment out if it's needed um, without having to shuffle it around and find space where I can work to finish off work pieces. So come and join me, I'll take you around, I'll show you every bit of a kit that I've got um, with explanations, where I've bought it from, such you know things like that and if you've got any comments uh, please put them at the bottom of the of the video as usual and please like and subscribe um, if you like it and uh, follow uh, so the first piece of equipment uh, I'm going to show you is my bout sander it's a Clark's um, off the shelf fairly reasonably cheap um, I think it was just over a hundred pounds or so uh, bought from Machine Mart, um, ideal for um, small jobs, uh, doing small little projects that, that I do. So, um, so you got your um, sanding disc um, on the side here, which the plate um, adjusts up and down, um, so that you can get different angles, and uh, the, the actual bout itself um, can give you a raised or a flat bed. Now, so the one thing that I found um, with this was um, that the tracking on the actual um, bout itself uh, was out. So it was running um, on one side. So it was, it was running over this side of the wheel um, and I didn't realise why that was happening. Um, uh, and I thought that this yellow um, adjuster here was just for um, tension but actually it's for tracking um, it centralizes the bout as it's running so um, you just make um, slight movements on this um, and it will it will move the bout left or right uh, depending on which way you turn until you get it centralized uh, so one thing you learn when you start playing with the tools how they break and how you can fix them or what causes things to call to go wrong so um, I guess know your equipment before you play with it read the instructions maybe I think so uh, so yeah just you might know, you might have seen this and wonder what it was um, now you know just the tracking so for my second piece of equipment is my pillar drill um, it again is a Clark's unit from Machine Mart um, it just comes as a standard frame and then you add uh, the drill to it. Um, I've got a corded Black & Decker that's well over 30 odd years old and still going strong. Um, but, uh, you know, they made them to last I suppose in those days. Now the actual pillar drill itself um, is not the best. You get what you pay for I suppose. Uh, there is movement in it um, that when you're trying to um, drill accurately uh, you got you got to really sort of compensate for those sort of things um, again the uh, depth guide here um, you know it's got a flimsy flimsy marker on there um, I wouldn't trust it um, so yeah you use something a little bit uh, more accurate um, and you know that you're getting what you want uh, it's also got a, a depth stop um, adjuster um, so you can work out where you want want it to be um, set it and also um, it's got a, a, a fine in um, adjustment at the bottom there uh, which you uh, screw in or screw out uh, just to get that final um, touch on the depth that you want 
it does the job. It's cheap. There we are. Okay, so squeezed here in the corner is my 10 inch table saw. Um, I can't even remember where I bought this from now, to be honest. Um, probably B&Q or something like that. Um, again, some time ago. So for its price, it's uh, it's done a lot of work and it's still going. Um, and I do believe it's probably still the original blade on there, which is probably a bit of a mistake on, on my part. Um, should, have, should have been uh, changed by now. Um, it's one of those things that you don't really think about it until you're doing some work and, and you're getting um, you're splitting wood on the end so um, probably best to uh, change the blade every now and then um, and also um, I've done a cross cut sledge um, just purely be, um, to increase the accuracy um, because you know these cheap units uh, are not particularly accurate in, in, um, in their cutting um, whether you you know go for an angle or a straight cut, um, then they're, they're not particularly great. Um, even on a straight cut, there's uh, some discrepancy of whether that is actually square. So, um, hence the the cross cut sledge um, by doing one of these, it's improved um, the the actual cut um, for its accuracy. Um, no end compared to what it was doing before so anything's better than nothing I suppose um, and again it's, it's it's an old unit but it's doing the job so this is uh, my new mitre saw um, I bought this uh, probably a couple of months ago now uh, purely because of the one that I had uh, the trigger uh, failed um, and would stay on and I couldn't turn it off so uh, it became a little bit dangerous but uh, that again was a, a, a sip um, mitre saw um, this one the um, iron hell um, really nice uh, the only small concern that I have with this is that if you leave it plugged in um, with the switch on as in it's live um, the, the trigger handle becomes um, warm, but worryingly warm. Uh, so I, I've, had, I've had a couple of comments when I um, researched it and reviews and people had commented about it, but no one actually saying that, you know, it's caused any uh, fires or any concerns, but yeah, just a bit strange. So I tend to, once I've used it, um, even sort of doing, you know, sort of, cut after cut um, if I'm going to be five or ten minutes I tend to pull the plug out on it um, you got a switch on the side here um, which is for the laser now um, the laser is pretty good to be fair uh, and again on this um, it's a nice little unit uh, again just over a hundred pounds worth uh, it's got adjusters um, on it fine adjusters on it um, so that you can um, ensure that you get that square um, lock it off uh, you've got your markings of 0, 15, 30, 45 um, degrees on there and you can make those fine adjustments and lock, lock it into place um, and the handle on the front here um, tightens up the, the turning um, plate and that keeps it all straight so you can work out um, and guarantee that you're getting the right angle true squared angled up for what you need and then lock it off um, not necessarily um, looking at what uh, the gauges that we have on here the one at the back and the one on the front um, not necessarily relying on those but you can you can do it yourself and ensure that you're getting the angled cut and the straight cut that you want. Now you can see that I have it sat in a box. Um, now this is the pretty much the best thing that I've discovered for collecting the sawdust um, when you're cutting. This thing and my previous one so I'm sure that you know the 
basic models that you can you know you buy off the shelf are probably all very similar to that other than um, you know the professional units they spray literally the sawdust and the chippings everywhere um, and I wanted to limit that you know the workshops small enough I don't need to make it any messier so um, I was using um, the, the, the dust extraction port at the back with a hoover um, that was working fine but as the cut um, cuts through the wood um, it sprays out down here so you get you're getting um, directional um, sprays as it deflects off off the back and it, it literally does go everywhere so um, I thought a box using the flaps I can close the flaps up um, and that seems to limit it as well as using um, the dust extractor on it as well so uh, the two two combined um, improves the dust collection uh, and limits the mess that gets into the workshop so if you're if you're considering um, using one of these in a very small workshop or any workshop really and you're struggling to retain the dust everywhere use a cardboard box but a nice unit nice unit and this was bought from um, tool station as I said I think it was on offer at the time for 95 pound um, from 115 something like that um, so yeah really pleased with it to be fair okay so finally it's uh, hand tools um, and the majority of the hand tools I have are Makita um, uh, and again most of them are work um, pieces of equipment some of them I've bought myself um, just because I like the, the actual um, make the product uh, the quality of them they they just keep going they're, they're really good pieces of kit um, and they're all battery operated 18 volts um, so I've had DeWalt's in the past um, and in comparison for the two I would go with the Makita's um, so if you're you know, so I'm in an R and over something. Then my small recommendation would be Makita. Um, pay that little bit extra, but you get the quality as well. These are good. With um, hand tools and and drills and such like, um, I have this little thing up here, which I bought actually off a, um, a shopping channel. So we all do it after a few beers. Thought it was a, a good idea, and actually, it was a good idea. This having this flexible lead as well um, gives you a lot of flexibility for uh, doing different things. On the face of it, it's a Dremel drill, um, but this has um, I don't know a Dremel, so I'm I'm, I'm not um, as a, you know comparing the two. That this has got that, and this. I don't know a Dremel, so I don't know what it has or what it doesn't have. Um, so you've got varying speeds um, on the front here, um, on off switch. And you've got a load of attachments that came with it. Um, you also get, which is one of the reasons why I've got it, because it also becomes a um, handheld router uh, trimmer. Um, sit that into there. That goes in. This obviously comes off, and um, you can put a router piece onto that, and and you can use that rather than having a big bulky router, um, which is what I wanted. Just a small one, so you can do some detailing. So tucked in the corner of the room here is um, my Stanley air compressor, um, oil free, uh, no maintenance to it at all. Um, uh, it's just great uh, and ideal for just blowing off uh, any dust uh, if you're doing any work on the worktop. Um, so it's well worth getting yourself a um, a compressor. Um, this you know nice and small. You get the cylinder ones, even though they're small, are still quite large in in that respect. Um, uh, so you're a bit limited to where you can store it. Uh, this one um, straight on the shelf. And it just sits there, tucked out of the way. So everybody has uh, clamps and saws and, uh, and little bits and bobs that 
don't quite have a home I suppose. Now I made um, this pegboard, believe it or not, some time ago for my son um, and his football boots to go up into the utility. Um, it just never got up onto the wall. It was floating around and when I decided to have a rearrange and a tidy up of this workshop um, I decided that I was going to utilise it um, for the clamps that I had that used to hang um, from the ceiling eaves um, but since then I've boarded out the, the ceiling so there's nowhere to, to hang the um, clamps. So they've all got a peg that they can go on to. Um, it's not perfect. It uh, does the job though. A whole lot better than what I uh, had before. Now, like the, these little tiny sprung loaded um, clamps, uh, they used to float around in a box and I could never find them. Um, in, even in a small little workshop like this, you tend to lose things. So if it's not organising up on the wall, then you're going to be searching for stuff. And, and that just takes time when you're trying to do something. So since reorganising my workshop, uh, one of the things that I wanted to achieve was to put in a dust extraction system. Uh, I got a Henry Hoover, um, which I know it's only a small workshop, and I'm sure a lot of you are probably um, in the same boat when I say that you've got the vac hose or the vac and the lead um, going across your workshop connecting it up to your different bits of equipment, your uh, sanders, your, your saws and such like um, and it becomes a trip hazard uh, and it's dangerous um, if you're trying to work safely certainly with um, some of these machines that um, can take your hand off pretty quickly so you don't want ha to have those sort of distractions um, around your feet or around you um, whilst you're trying to work so I thought that um, it needed to have um, a dust extraction system put in so as everyone does um, searched online looked at YouTube videos and uh, see these cyclone units um, looked on Amazon um, found them on there uh, quite cheap um, I think it was like, like 13 quid or something 14 pounds um, and it came within um, a week week and a half um, from trying if I just move the Henry hose out of the way. Now I'm sure you I'm sure you've all seen them um, on YouTube and Amazon and such like. Um, but they uh, they do really work. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people talking about them, I and mean, you're a little bit dubious um, that these these sort of things actually do what they say they do on the tin. Um, but for fourteen pounds, this uh, this has got no complaints from me at all. Um, so it's definitely worth the purchase if you are considering it. Um, I've got it connected um, to the white um, pipe work going up the wall, um, and that's a thirty-two mil. Um, PVC waste pipe uh, bought from B and Q. No, Screwfix. Um, so yeah, that was bought from Screwfix, and all the fittings are push fit fittings, elbows. Um, now I've got it going to the sander that I showed you earlier. Um, a dust port there. I've got a dust port just behind the mitre um, saw, and a dust port just behind me on the um, working bench you have to obviously close off um, whatever um, how many dust ports that you may have you have to close them all off so that you've only got one um, operational at a time now in the normal circumstances as you know um, you'd put in a, a blast gate um, now obviously for the pipe work that I've got um, the system is uh, bespoke as in you know I've made it up myself it's not a kit um, you don't get blast gates um, this is waste pipe so um, I couldn't find any blast gates that would actually fit for the system that I wanted so in the end um, uh, as part of the accessories like the, the elbows the U-bends and such like that you can buy you can also buy a blank 
end, um, which is just a bung, a, a plug. Um, so all I do is just put the plug in the end of, of, of the pipe that I'm not using at the time and put the vacuum hose on the piece that I am. So um, it works like a blast gate without having those little wonderful slidey little things that everyone seems to rave about. So um, you can get by. So okay, so this is um, obviously part of the detachment from the Henry Hoover. Um, this I managed to um, come across from an old Hoover. Um, it was just, uh, I think it was the Dyson uh, on the back end um, and, and ended up just utilising um, because of it obviously retracting in and out so it makes it um, nice and compact. And as I said, that what you do is, uh, if this technically would be classed as your blast gate, and what I do, what I do is just interact with these, so swap them, swapping them over. So this now gets closed off by pushing this down, and then I can open up one of the other ones um, just purely by adding that onto there, um, and that works. It's you know don't need no expensive blast gates, just a blank end and an elbow. And to show you the effectiveness of the Henry, I'll just go and stick him on. So you can see, you don't lose any suction um, from having one of those cyclone systems uh, and you know having this around the workshop, no matter how big or small your workshop is, um, this is definitely worth having just for you know safety um, issues. So if you're thinking about it and you weren't sure, get yourself one. So just finally, I suppose, uh, the couple of items that are behind me that you can see on the wall, um, they're on French cleat systems uh, individually. Normally you'd have a, a long piece across the wall, which then you can um, move and have different ones at different levels so that you can move them up and down or move them across. I've just done individual ones for the individual pieces of um, kit just for now. I do plan on doing the full length and um, multiple heights uh, at some point but for now that's how it is um, over my left shoulder is the sand in um, storage uh, sheets and, and, and for the uh, belt sander and uh, the red dots that you see are um, storage bins for screws and on the red uh, cap they're, they're, they're just bottles um, So they're just bottles with the uh, the tops cut off or the sides cut off, um, and then with with the size of the the, the screw um, written on the front, and they're all uh, in size order. So that just helps you know where things are, and and just keeps things a little bit more organised. So. You know something similar to that you could do yourself um so again hope you enjoyed it please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and hope to see you in the next videos um, which i intend to show you some of the projects that i've done but haven't recorded um as i said at the beginning of this is just sometimes when you're doing videos uh, it takes longer to do a video than it would to do the project and i'd rather just be doing the woodwork uh, side of things I guess so um, I had a bit of a rest from doing videos I've done some projects and what I'll do is just show you the projects um, the techniques and the things that I've done and then you can you know get some inspiration and do your own things in your little workshops or whatever you've got
So stay safe. Keep your head down from this darn virus. And we'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks for watching.